Hey guys, it's John Ribs here, back at you with another Long War 2 class review. Today I'm looking at early game Grenadiers. So in this series I look at early, mid, and late game for each class, and we're going to be using a couple of metrics to talk about how strong the class is and how strong their perks are. We're looking at the alpha strike rating of perks and the class, and the breakdown rating. So alpha striking is how good a class is at overwatching against an incoming pod, and then on XCOM's own turn using abilities or shooting in order to kill it outright so it can't attack back. And breakdown strength is based on what happens when that enemy pod does get to attack back or if multiple pods are active and all of a sudden you're getting shot at and psi attacked and status affected and things like that. Does the soldier excel or does it curl up and die? The Grenadier. All right, so I think the Grenadier is my least favorite class in the game in 1.4 just a very inflexible boring soldier who is occasionally extremely extremely powerful and because of that regularly makes it into my teams there are lots of perks on this tree and they do lots of different things and i don't think many of the level ups are actually super close in terms of decision making so I'm going to talk about the early game Grenadier today and some of these decisions are quite interesting and then we'll just we'll see how it develops. Uh, definitely, definitely not my favorite class. Grenadiers start with launch grenade and uh, their secondary weapon is a grenade launcher. So they can launch frags, flashbangs, smoke grenades further than other classes early in the game. And their grenades also have one extra tile of radius, basically, which adds up to a lot of tiles because it's that, you know, pi r squared sort of thing where an extra tile of radius means quite a lot more than you might assume it did if you hadn't paid attention in high school geometry or whatever. Um, the thing is, all the other classes can already throw grenades early in the campaign. You don't have a lot of great consumables to put on your soldiers, so they're usually just going to have space to bring grenades. The fact that you have longer range on your grenades doesn't matter that much because you're trying to get up close to the enemies anyway at this stage in the campaign. Classes like Shinobis and Assaults are some of your strongest damage dealers, so you really want to be able to support that, and at long range you just don't have consistent threat yet so you you don't want to be fighting long range battles in the early game in general in XCOM. So the range doesn't matter very much, the fact that they can launch grenades doesn't matter very much. The area of effect almost matters. This is very code specific and maybe in other iterations of the game this will be different. But in Long War 2, how pods behave is when they're walking around, they cluster very close together. And you're basically never going to want to hit a pod which is just walking around with a grenade anyway. Unless it's like an incendiary grenade and they're perfectly clustered. But in general, you're going to try to overwatch trap them or maybe use a cone attack like a flamethrower against them every now and then. Usually you'll try to set up an overwatch ambush. So they're clustered together, but it doesn't matter because you don't want to grenade them. And then when you pull them for the first time, they spread out quite a lot. And they're actually, I'm pretty sure, coded to try to spread out exactly far enough that a grenade isn't going to hit two of them at once for a grenadier. So like, your, your radius increase is just perfectly worthless, <laughs> essentially. Um, if the pod survives her turn and moves around some more, they may cluster back together again, and then you may be getting quite a lot of value out of this extra radius on the grenade. Because of that, I've given Grenadiers 5 out of 10 for breakdowns. But you don't really want that to be happening at this stage of the campaign, and the Grenadier's effect is not powerful enough to try to work out ways to let it happen. Like, theoretically, you could flashbang a pod and hunker your guys and get them to cluster up again, and you may want to do that, in fact, later on in the game, especially on untimed missions when you have very strong cone attacks and stuff like that. But early game, pretty much all your missions are timed, and you just don't really want to mess around with something like that in order to hit enemies with a frag grenade. It's not very strong. So a grenadier ends up being 
a rookie that's like somewhat glorified. The one really nice thing that Grenadiers can do early in the campaign is hit Sectoids who are a long way away with flashbangs, which is really nice to have to defend against mind controls from Sectoids. Sectoids mind control your soldiers quite often in the early game on Legend difficulty when they attack with mind spin, and having a flashbang or a shinobi ready to deal with the Sectoid is vital in that situation. So that's a nice thing to have, but again, other soldiers can throw flashbangs pretty far as well. Uh, usually just some careful positioning will ensure that that isn't a risk. And this soldier, you know, it's hard to work out ways that this soldier is much stronger than a rookie at squatty. And even, even as we work our way towards sergeant, to be honest. So 4 out of 10 for alpha striking and 5 out of 10 for breakdowns at squatty. That might even be generous. Uh, at Lance Corporal, we're picking between Sapper, Needle Grenades, and Rapid Deployment. Needle Grenades is one of the more interesting perks in the game because it's a purely strategic perk. Your explosives do not destroy loot when they kill enemies. I don't care the tiniest bit about this perk. <laughs> not, even, not even a small little itsy bitsy amount. Your grenadiers are not going to be killing many enemies with their grenades. Um, your grenadier is not a finisher who you're building with damage grenades to get the last hit on enemies, on legend difficulty at least. On lower difficulties, where enemies have slightly lower health pools, that may be a more appealing option. But on legend difficulty, if your grenadier is hitting an enemy with a damaging grenade, it's going to be like an incendiary grenade while it's at full HP to control it. A frag grenade while it's at full HP to remove cover from it, or a frag grenade while it's at full HP to shred its armor, or maybe you'll deal some damage to enemies who are clustered up with a grenade for some reason. Somehow they got clustered up and you're deciding to deal some just, you know, generic AoE damage. But in that situation, you have lots of enemies active and you're like searching for extra damage with consumables so you probably have better things on your mind than whether or not you're going to destroy loot it's perfectly okay to destroy loot sometimes and this is just not a thing that we have to worry about so needle grenades for me on legend difficulty is an absolute no-go one out of ten one out of ten uh probably the lowest rating i've given any perk so far i didn't give it zeros but that's sort of because I thought they'd look weird graphically or something. I don't know. <laughs> um, so, yeah, that's that's my spiel about needle grenades. I know some people like their needle grenades and try to build grenadiers to like deal damage and kill enemies outright with them. It just doesn't work very well. It doesn't scale great. It doesn't even do very well early. It's just not not very good so like i said if you're having fun with that on a lower difficulty um i don't want to like rain on your parade super hard or anything but i don't think it works on legend difficulty very well at all uh at lance corporal we also have sapper which i rated six out of ten for alpha striking four out of ten for breakdowns your explosives can destroy many cover objects so we have to talk about how exactly destroying cover objects works in this game Cover objects typically have 5 hit points, 10 hit points, 20 hit points, or like more than that, in which case you don't really need to worry about it because you're never destroying them with any reasonable attack. Maybe a bunker buster. A regular frag grenade is dealing enough damage to destroy stuff which has 5 environmental hit points, and if you grab sapper, it's now dealing enough damage to consistently kill stuff with 10 environmental hit points if it hits right in the center. Now, objects don't remember taking environmental hit point damage in this game, so if you throw a frag grenade which deals 8 damage to environment at something with 10 hit points, you're just accomplishing nothing. The cover doesn't even know that you've attacked it, so you can't like stack grenades up together like you could in Long War 1. So Sapper does have a lot of value if you know enough about your maps to recognize when something has 10 environmental hit points, and there's no real way to ever know that. Um, you just sort of have to learn by experience, basically. I don't know very well about all the different cover objects. Um, Sapper is nice for blowing up cars. It will help a lot with that. 
It's nice for blowing up, like, some fences and a variety of other objects that enemies might take cover behind. Some of the heavy cover poles, I think, are 10 environmental hit points. If you put the grenade centered on the cover, it's going to blow up more sorts of cover. Um, I don't value that super highly because my soldiers aren't really that good at shooting at this point in the campaign anyway. And a lot of my damage output comes from proximity bonuses on shotguns or from consumables, grenades, combat protocols, things like that or from Overwatch fire. None of these things really benefit from destroying cover, actually, early on in the campaign. Um, if I'm at close proximity, I can just flank the enemy, probably. Overwatch doesn't care about cover. Consumables generally don't care about cover. So I just don't think Sapper's so amazing. And later on in the campaign, again, I, I find myself caring less and less about cover, to be honest. You get sharpshooters and rangers who can basically shoot through cover, and you have extremely strong overwatch builds which don't care at all about cover, and you have fewer and fewer enemies who actually use cover, because mechs don't use cover, berserkers don't use cover, sectopods, gatekeepers, chrysalids, stun lancers pretend to use cover, but then they run at you and aren't using it anymore. So I don't value sapper super highly, and because of that rapid deployment is my go-to at Lance Corporal basically all the time. Uh, you toggle it on for a turn and it lets you throw a support grenade for free, so a flashbang or a smoke grenade. This is actually really, really strong. Usually on your grenadier's high output turns, your grenadier is going to want to throw a support grenade at something, and so it's just an extra action. Compare it to run and gun, it's doing the same thing. Assuming you were going to throw a support grenade this turn, rapid deployment is doing the same thing that run and gun would do for an assault. And that's a very strong effect. I give it 4 out of 10 for alpha and 8 out of 10 for breakdowns, which might be a little bit low, honestly, but it is on the long cooldown and it doesn't do very much yet. Uh, we don't have dense smoke or sting grenades yet, so our support grenades are still pretty mediocre. At Corporal, we're picking between Heavy Ordnance, Center Mass, and Protector. So Heavy Ordnance and Protector both do sort of the same thing. Any damaging grenade gains a bonus use, or any non-damaging grenade gains a bonus use, if they're in the Grenadier's special grenade-only consumable slot. Grenadiers get one extra consumable, which can only be a grenade. Um, if you're going to pick one of these, you always pick Heavy Ordnance, because it applies to Incendiary Grenades, which are the strongest grenades in the game by a decent margin and if you're trying to make grenadiers work and be strong you're basically always going to get advent officer autopsy fairly early on build the proving ground and get incendiary grenades going for them that's one of the big appeals of the class heavy ordnance is one of the only reasons that the class is actually better than other classes at using incendiary grenades they get like slightly longer range again but it doesn't matter that much and they do get one more tile of radius, which given that an incendiary grenade starts with one tile radius, does increase the number of tiles that an incendiary grenade can hit quite a lot. But an incendiary grenade, and this is one of the strengths of actually going for this, so this is sort of a cumulative benefit. An incendiary grenade works really well on just any old soldier. What the incendiary grenade does is you throw it at an enemy, and that enemy is 100% of the time set on fire, takes a huge amount of damage, and can't do anything during its own turn. So it's just very reliable crowd control. If you're running extremely light guerrilla operations or something like that, and have five incendiary grenades, you only have to worry about uh, fewer than a half of the enemies on the map, because the other half are going to get dealt with by being set on fire by one of your soldiers just throwing a consumable, which can never miss at them. So Heavy Ordnance, I couldn't really give this a high rating because it doesn't do anything for another month or two when you take it. But I gave it 5 out of 10 for Alpha and 6 out of 10 for Breakdowns. Even though it's a damaging grenade, like it's a, it's a status effect. That's what you really care about on the Incendiary Grenade. You care that it's setting them on fire. So I care a little bit more about that in terms of Breakdown than Alpha. Uh, Protector is just a mistake. You don't really take that. You can get Smoke Grenades and Flashbangs for free. And the strongest thing your Grenadier does for most of the campaign is set things on fire. And Center Mass, I gave 5 out of 10, 5 out of 10. On other classes, it's been a 7 out of 10, 7 out of 10 pretty regularly. But other classes get to shoot more often than Grenadiers do. 
So it is possible, I think, to take Center Mass and Grenadier. You need to have a lot of aim and a lot of survivability. And what that Grenadier looks like is you bring a pistol and you train some pistol perks. Having quick study out of the AWC to have your training times would be really nice as well. And you shoot quite a lot. And you have rapid deployment with dense smoke and sting grenades to occasionally use a very nice consumable. But generally speaking, your Grenadier is like uh, a bad ranger uh, a bad ranger oh god <laughs> oh god so that's not an exciting path to go down but it is one that you can pursue if the stats are looking right for it at sergeant we're picking between boosted cores formidable and blue screen bombs i've talked a lot about how much i love formidable in the past and the same is true here i think it's a great perk especially um, a lot of the things that I said about technicals are true for Grenadiers as well, except that technicals get all of their inventory space for defensive consumables and stuff, whereas Grenadiers, to be really effective, have to use their inventory slots for grenades. So um, Grenadiers can try to be sort of bad technicals where they're like frontline tanks who hunker and occasionally use strong consumables. But, but they're much worse than technicals at doing that. So Formidable can help them out by giving them a little bit of extra hit points that they could really use. Uh, recently though, I've been favoring blue screen bombs at Sargent. I gave this a three out of 10 for Alpha and an eight out of 10 for Breakdowns. Flashbang grenades now disorient robotic units and reduce their resistance to hacking. So, there are a few things to say about this. One is that all robot pods are somewhat common in 1.4. You'll run into them a lot on UFOs that you run. And if you understand the strategic layer at like a legend difficulty level, you can engineer situations where you're running quite a lot of reinforcement UFO missions. It's doable. At some point I'll do strategic layer tutorials and we can talk about that. So it's nice to deal with uh, full robot pods. It's also uh, in 1.4 specialists got Sentinel, which makes them such a strong class that they're worth bringing on non guerrilla operations missions as like just rifle soldiers. And because you want specialists on lots of missions, but you want to like build them sort of as rifle soldiers, you're going to have haywire protocols and eventually full overrides as well, most likely which you want to be able to capture mechs with. And having blue screen bombs to reduce the hack defense of a mech or a drone, like a tier two drone early on in a mission to get an extra guy on your team is very, very valuable. Very, very valuable. So like, I'm pretty happy if I can trade a flashbang for a mech who's mind controlled for the rest of the mission. So because of that, I like blue screen bombs a lot and I gave it a, you know, pretty good rating. Almost the best rating of any perk that I've reviewed on this tree so far. I guess only heavy ordnance is the same and rapid deployment is slightly better. Boosted cores, explosive grenades do one damage. I believe, at least the last time I checked, this applies to damage over time ticks as well. So if you're using an incendiary grenade, it's going to burn the enemy for one more each time that it burns. Um, they're really king damage over time grenade was a gas grenade back in the day. But gas grenades have fallen on sort of rough times, they've been nerfed considerably, and I think the enemies that they were good at killing have sort of become less common. Uh, when the game was a lot about doing 0% supply raids, which were full of advent pods of 8 advent guys, gas grenades were quite good. And now the game really isn't that anymore, so you don't have quite as large masses of enemies to target with a high AoE grenade. And when you do have lots of enemies, there are lots of snakes and robots and things which are immune to gas. So incendiary is really the king of damaging grenades right now. Frag grenades are used more for shred than for damage, I would say. In general, boosted cores is not super exciting for anything. I gave it, what, a four out of four twice? Yeah, I mean, it will... 
if your grenadier is like a very mediocre grenadier and you just decided to take sapper heavy ordnance and head toward a haven with your grenadier then i can see taking boosted cores to try to get a little bit more damage out of you're probably like bringing four frag grenades per mission or something on that guy it wouldn't be a terrible pick but i i don't like the way that a damaging grenadier scales in this iteration of the game i think if you're working the strategic layer like you really want to be and building squad compositions toward like overwatch ability hunker plus squad site ability those are the things which can really break the game or strong consumables like exosuit consumables uh like damaging grenadiers just don't really have a place in any of those strategies they're they're gonna stick out like a sore thumb so blue screen bombs is my pick here and that's it for early game grenadiers. These are soldiers who make it onto missions as like the last soldier fairly often. They bring some unique things, sort of, like they can throw a flashbang a long way. They have an extra inventory slot for another support grenade. Once they have blue screen bombs, they're actually helping specialists to hack stuff, which is sort of nice. Um, they can remove cover from things sometimes, and sometimes that's good. It's like... I don't know. I'll, I'll usually have some grenadiers in the barracks who are working their way up the ranks, but they're never soldiers that I'm super, super blown away at the strength of. Even as you get into mid game and pick up dense smoke and sting grenades, they're still never that amazing, but, but they're okay. They, they can pull their weight and I don't think optimizing them is super confusing. You just pick the turn where consumables are most useful and use a ton of consumables with them. And then if you have like extra consumables the rest of the time, you can judge whether or not it's worth it to chuck a frag or if you're just going to like overwatch or hunker or something like that. Uh, generally, I'd be equipping Grenadiers with an SMG or a shotgun early on in the campaign, just because I don't think they're going to do very relevant things with assault rifle fire. A shotgun lets them use proximity to their advantage, which is always nice. You're often trying to use proximity to your advantage. And an SMG lets them be a flanker just to mess with AI trees, like get AI flanked and make it move to weird places and things like that, which, which can be nice. That's the plan though. I hope you guys enjoyed this class review and I will see you tomorrow to look at mid-game Grenadiers. Bye guys.